Today I am going to be doing a demonstration of the chameleon color changing markers for this month's Smart Art Box project. Actually, I'm really behind. I'm not sure what month this is from. This video is being sponsored by Smart Art Box. If you are unfamiliar with Smart Art Box, it is a monthly subscription box where every month they send you a box full of full-size art supplies. And if it's something like this, where you don't know what you're doing or how to use them, they're not going to leave you feeling totally lost. They send you with a brochure that basically makes this an entire art lesson in a box, complete with supplies. But in the brochure, you've got some project pointers. It talks about the style that you're going to be working in. And then on the back, you get step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete that style opening this up like always it feels like opening a gift a present you've got the pretty tissue paper and then we've got the brochure that I've already gone over you've got some project pointers a bit of a history on this the style that you're working in and then the instructions on the back We've got a five set piece. This is the chameleon color tones in the cool tones. This is what's going to change the color on your main marker. We've got a 12 piece set of art alternatives. These are fine liner pens. I love, I have so many of these really cool markers from Smart Art Box that I collect that just, I love them. I use them for so many different sketches and things. Then we've got the chameleon color tone. This is in the vermilion and then the Strathmore 400 marker pad. This is a six by eight inch pad. So getting started, I'm going to just do a little bit of a, a sketch here of my snail. So I'm just using a regular graphite pencil. This isn't a project that I'm trying to make look super amazing. I just want a cute little cartoon to go with. This paper, it's pretty easy to draw on and the lines erase fairly well. Draw his little head out there, give him a smile. The style for this month's box was a cartoon. And for whatever reason, one of my favorite little cartoons to draw is a cute little snail. Don't ask why I think snails are adorable. I'm apparently a crazy person. Got some grass in there. And that is going to be my sketch. I'm not going to put a ton of detail in this guy. I just kind of want to play with the markers, see how the colors shift. Now, before I start on my project, I want to do some testing with the markers to see how they actually blend. So you start with your main color. This is, for me, going to be the chameleon color tone, the vermilion, the red marker. And it comes with a clear top on it or that is going to basically make it fade. If I use that as my main color, you can see the little white nib there. That will make it fade from clear out into a pink and then into the darker red. And you have to make sure that you do this the right side up. So there's the marker. I need to hold it like this, this side up in order or facing down really, in order for this to work right. So I'm going to choose which tip I want on the marker, remove that little cap there. And now I'm going to hold it in place. The longer that I hold this, and again, this needs to be right side up. I need the clear in this case, or if I'm using a color, don't hold it upside down like that. Keep it upright. That needs to be on top running into the red marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. And you'll see now, so that is clear. So see how it starts clear and it's going to fade into a pink and then into darker red as I move out. You get this really nice, nice soft transition. It's just going to go darker and darker red in this case. Now the colors that the set came with, I'm gonna show you how all of these look, but they will fade from whether it be that mint green or into red, the violet into red, light blue into red, everything's going to fade into red because my base marker here, my main marker is that red. So let's go ahead and try this violet color. Same thing, that needs to go on top and it needs to point down onto the tip that I'm going to use. And my main, the vermilion marker, that has two different tips I can choose from, a very fine one or a larger one. So I'm gonna switch that over. Now you'll see it starts with this really nice violet color, matches the Smart Art Box color. And then it'll start to fade into that deeper red. Now the challenge here is controlling where it's going to fade. You really don't have a whole lot of control. If I want it to stay purple longer, I need to hold the purple on the red pen for longer. If I want it to shift into red faster, I'm going to use the, the purple, I'll pull it off faster. But the thing is, it's hard to know how long to let it wait. You sit there, like in this case, so we'll, we'll do the green. I'm gonna wait, 
and I'm gonna wait. And this part got a little frustrating for me. I don't like to, I, I just wanna grab the color I want and start drawing. You have to, to prep the color that it's going to fade into. And it takes a fair amount of time. You can see it starting here. And this is kind of weird. It still kind of blows my mind. It, it doesn't, my brain says, no, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to turn a red marker that green by having that pigment run into it. So it's a pretty cool set, but it feels to me more like art supply toys instead of just art supplies. Like this would be fun if I'm sitting in front of the TV watching something, not really paying attention too much to the artwork, just sketching or talking to friends and I wanna sketch. They're fun to play with, but as far as trying to make a full project that you have a lot of control over what color goes where and when that color shift happens, that's going to be a much bigger challenge if you, you care about that. If you're just doing it to have fun, these were a blast to play with. The waiting I did not enjoy. So we're gonna go ahead and in this case, we'll put that purple and then we're going to wait and wait. I didn't wait very long on that one. So the color shift should happen fairly quickly. So that is that dark purple and see how quick it'll start cha changing into red because I didn't leave the purple on top for very long. Now, if you do this upside down, the red will drip into the purple, which is not how these are supposed to work. So again, make sure you're keeping the pen in the right order or the which one is leaking downwards. Let's try the next color here. This one is a blue. Now I'm going to do the same thing and we're gonna sit here and wait. And wait. And wait. I don't have the patience to do this very long. Like I wouldn't be able to sit here for hours working with these because while they're fun, I, it, I also just want to draw or work on something. I don't want to sit and wait for it to mix together. So that's going to depend on you and as far as how much fun you're going to think that that is. I am not patient enough for that. But look how nicely it blends. It blends it in a much easier way than as far as like when I've used Copics in the past, I always had a hard time getting a nice smooth blend. This does. So if you use them enough and got really got the hang of how long you want to keep a color on before it's going to shift, you may really like these because they do blend really, really nice. So now let's try the light blue. This is still, it's so weird to me. It makes my brain tingle all funny. Like, no, this is not supposed to work that way. How can you make the red marker turn light blue like this? It's magic. And wait, wait some more. The majority of the time I was using these was spent waiting, preparing the color to blend out. So there's that light blue. I can't believe that it doesn't, it's not instantly mixed with the red. That still, like I said, tingles in my brain because my brain is not understanding how that works. No one ruin it for me. If you know how it works, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I like thinking it's magic. Then down into the red and then it'll stay red as long as you want. You can keep shading the red for a really long time. Now, if you had a lot of different base colors, because that vermilion that I have, you can get that in multiple colors. If you had a lot of other colors where you're shifting constantly, the weight might not feel as long to you if you were only changing the colors on certain areas you really wanted to blend. But if you were using like, let's say I had a green and I wanted to just put straight green somewhere, I don't have to wait for that to blend to um, fade out into another color or prep the marker. So let's go ahead and try working on the little snail I drew out. So first we have to prep the marker and wait and wait. In my first attempt, I'm going to use the clear and try to get it to fade into the red. I didn't love how I blended it out. So use or fail, or fail there, but we're gonna sit there and wait some more and more. Seriously, this part got really, really boring. I would have liked these better if you didn't have to wait as long to prep the color. And that really shows a lot about my personal issues with being impatient. And waiting. And the funny thing is, as long as I waited on this, I still did not get that much of the clear So there is the smaller tip, much, much smaller than the side that I was using for my sample, my tests there. You can see it, it fades really nicely into the red. 
but then I decided to blend that was too red and I'm going to have to try to fix that. So I ended up putting more white or the clear, I say white, but it's not white. It just makes it clear. So the white of the paper is showing through, which gives you that lighter color. I decided to see if I could blend that out a bit better by adding more of that. So we added that a little bit more. Let's go over it. And it did let it blend better, but it, it ended up a lot darker than what I initially intended. So like I said, it's, it's more like an art toy than something that you're going to have a lot of control over if you are creating artwork that you really care what color goes where and, and when it, it color shifts. I think when I was younger, like pre-teenage, teenager, I would have loved playing with these. Definitely, they are fun if you can be patient. Okay, waiting again. And I'm leaving this in real time. I mean, yeah, I can cut out the waiting time, but I want you guys to get a good feel for how long you end up waiting, how much time working with these is spent in waiting for the color to absorb into the, your base marker. My edges don't need to be super clean because I've got those other, um, the fine liner pens that I can clean stuff up with if I need to. Now here, mostly red, so I'm going to go over this again with the purple. It blends okay sort of it doesn't blend like what you would get with like Windsor and Newton pigment marker that's going to be definite blending you can make things super soft but you can get it to blend to an extent on this the marker paper was pretty nice to work on very very smooth I mean it's marker paper it should be but it also wasn't super thin like the Windsor and Newton marker paper their pigment marker paper that way I think it's 20 pounds it's like working on tissue paper this was pretty nice to work on it wouldn't work for the Windsor and Newton pigment marker because it's not the right texture but for this it was really nice and I can repeat this blending into from the purple into the red until I get the purple as dark as I want. And we're going to wait some more. Are you noticing a theme here? That theme is my impatience. We'll go ahead and darken that up a bit. Now I'm starting to get a better fade as I layered this. The previous layers don't reactivate or lift or anything like that. I'm just layering pigment on top of pig pigment. So that gave me a pretty good fade between the purple and the red. And now for painting the snail's body, we will sit here forever, or what seems like forever, and let the blue run into the red. I think definitely for me, I would prefer, as cool as these were to play with, I would definitely prefer to just grab the color of marker I want and not have to sit and wait and wait and wait when I wanted to, to fade things. Although this could be cool if you use them in combination with your other, like any other marker that you might use and just saved this for areas that you wanted to blend certain ways. And I don't think I would have the patience to do a full piece that I was taking seriously and doing a lot of detail on. So getting some of that clear into the red. The red was starting to get too dark too fast there.
some more waiting. Use that darker purple so I can separate some of the lines here. And again, I'm going to have to keep outline or reloading that purple in order to keep that flowing through this one marker. This definitely reminded me of, you'll occasionally see different art supplies that you look at and think, okay, it looks cool, but it's also very impractical. Um, I've seen palettes that were like that, where it was like, that doesn't even make sense. That that looks like more work than just using my regular palette. Why would I spend $120 on the very impractical item just because it's different? And I feel like that's kind of what these markers are. They're different for the sake of being different, but they're not super practical fun but not practical throw some grass in there so i was really excited to see that this is what came in the smart art box and this is one of the things i love so much with smart art boxes is i was able to test these out i had everything i need to get a pretty good feel for if this was something that i liked and wanted to run out and buy a whole bunch of i was at michael's a little while after doing this recording this video and they had these there and i got i saw those i was like hey those i tried those and i'm really glad i did so i'm not spending a ton of money to get all of the supplies to find out that they are fun to play with but like i said fairly impractical so the the smart art boxes are great to get to test these out have everything you need to test them so that you can form that opinion as to whether or not that medium that month is something that you're super interested in or not And I had definitely been wanting to test these out. So this was one of the boxes I was so excited when I opened it and saw what it was coming. I personally, when my smart art boxes are coming in, I don't look up what they're going to be that month. I wait until I open the box because it is so much fun to have no idea what's going to be in the box that month. So this was really, I, I was pretty excited about this one. And these fine liner pens, I really like having all of these different colors. I keep them near my desk. I like them for quick sketches in sketchbooks or just for taking notes and such. They're fun to write with. And we're going to wait some more. And more. I really like that the project, the theme for this month was to draw a cartoon because I think that that is definitely a very suitable subject for these markers because you're not trying to make something look super realistic in that case. If it fades sooner or later than you anticipated, it's not a huge deal. These are definitely, this style of art is definitely, I think, a good choice for these markers. I don't think I would have had as much fun if I was trying to draw a realistic bird or something like that. I think I would have gotten a little bit more frustrated with them. But drawing a cartoon, that was fun. Draw some random polka dots because why not? All snails have polka dots, right? And that is it for my little faded snail. Well, maybe not quite it. A couple more details there. There we go. If you have done this box with these markers, link for me your whatever projects you finished. I would love to see what you guys drew with them. 
If you are interested in signing up to get your own smart art box, I have a link in the video description that will give you a discount off your subscription for life, along with all of the countries that these boxes are available to. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every week. And because YouTube tends to be a bit temperamental, you may also want to click on the bell icon or even my email newsletter to make sure you are notified when new videos go up.